All right, baby, it's time to get that work. Shalom, shalom to the 12 tribes of Israel. We defending the Messiah. We Mashiach to the bone. Long live the king. All praises to the most high. Yah, glory be his name. Most holy be his name. Let's get that work, baby. That's right, baby. We finna get this work in on this teaching. We finna get the work on this teaching. Defending the Mashiach. Yahusha is his name. Some say Yahabasha. Some say Yeshua. In English, we call him Joshua. Y'all salvation. Even some call him Jesus. But Yahusha is his name. So I'm calling Yeshaya. But Yahusha. Own it. Own it. Own it. Chill. Chill. We gon' get that work. We gon' get that work. We gon' get that work. All right, family, again, this is your brother, Brother Takoa Malachi. Uh, we're doing another um, teaching based off um, an email and some questions that we received. And um, we got a good one. We got a good one right here. Now, we see the question that was stating, how can there be two saviors? If Yah, which is the Most High, say that he's the Savior and there's none besides him, then how can there be two Saviors? How can Mashiach, uh, Yahusha, be a Savior if Yah says he's the only Savior and there's what? None besides him. So let's go into the scriptures and let's break this down so let's get some full understanding. 
All right, so let's let's look at the scriptures where Yah is stating that He's the only Savior. Let's go to Isaiah forty-three and three. Again, first we're going to Isaiah forty-three and three. It says, "For I am Yah, thy Elohim." And again, I'm going to be using different words that's in the King James. Um, so it might show different, but I speak it different. For I am Yah, thy Elohim, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, and Ethiopia and Seba for thee. Isaiah 43 and 11. I, even I, am Yah, and besides me, there's no Savior. Besides me, there's no Savior. Isaiah 45 and 15. Verily thou art Elohim that hidest thyself, O God, uh, O Elohim of Israel, the Savior. Isaiah 45 and 21. Tell ye, and bring ye near. Yea, let them take counsel together, who have declared this from the ancient time, who have told it from that time. Have not I, Yah, and there is no God, uh, no Elohim besides me? I'm a just Elohim and a Savior. There's none besides me. Hosea 13 and 4. Yet I am Yah, thy Elohim, from the land of Egypt, and thou shalt know that no God but me, for there's no Savior besides me. Now, when you look at that at face value, it's cut and dry. It's cut and dry. It's speaking of what it's showing us here. It's saying that Yah, the Most High, is the only Savior. Right? It's speaking that. And you can really look at the order when you go to uh, 1 Corinthians 11. It talks about um, that Yah is the hell of uh, El of it's, Yah is the hell of Messiah. Messiah is the hell, head of man, and man is head of the woman. So we seeing that we seeing a a type of in these scriptures at face value. It looks like it's saying that it'll be a contradiction to the New Testament, where Mashiach is saying he's the Savior. So let's dig into the scriptures and go a little further. All right, so when you look at Yah through the scriptures, right, and he's about to do any type of work on earth, does he get off of the throne and come down himself and do the work? Again, does he get off the throne, come down to earth himself and do the work? No, Yah stays on the throne and he sent a representative of himself. And that's why you'll see all through the Old Testament, the Torah, the Tanakh, Tanakh, you'll see what it talks about. He came down and, and looked or, and all those are, are types and figures of trying to explain something in a way that our finite, finite mind can understand it. And he would always send messengers or, or his sons, which is, or the angels, he would send them down to deliver messages and they would speak as him. They would have his word and speak as in first person as him when they would be speaking. But he would always send a, representa a, a, a representative of himself. All right. So we're going to look through the scriptures and see and show that he always send messengers or ambassadors. And an ambassador and an and ambassador it's somebody that is being a represent, representative of a country. The ideas of the country, the thoughts of the country, the laws of the country, the culture of the country. So we can have an ambassador that comes from Africa over here to America. And the job of the ambassador, and the ambassador is to give the will, the mind, the understanding, and the culture of the king of where it's been sent from. So the Most High always send ambassadors from the realm of heaven to the realm of earth. Because in the end, the Most High, just like other nations wanted to do and other kings wanted to do, they wanted to expand their territory, right? With the mind, that's why he said, just as it is in heaven, so let it be what? In earth, the other dominion of the realm that I have. So I send ambassadors ambassadors to give earth the mindset of heaven and follow the pattern of heaven this is why he always chose a representative 
whether it be from the heavens, which are the angelic beings or the messengers or the sons, or it be one of the sons on earth that he would send to a nation as his mouthpiece, as his representation coming from him. So we must first understand that without the most high, there's nothing that can be done. Everything is in the order of the most high. The sun, the moon, the stars, uh, the animals, all these type of things are in what? The order of the most high. They're in the order of the most high. And the same way that they are, it's the same way that man's supposed to be, what? In the order of the most high. So don't, don't anything happen without his orders or outside of him. See, these are the things that we have to understand. So this is why, and I'm going to give you what, my whole premise. This is why he can say that he's the only Savior and still send Saviors. He can be the only Savior because he's the only one that's causing salvation to happen, the originator of the point of reference from which salvation comes. So this is why he's saying, besides me, there's nobody that's on my level, that's co-equal with me. Nobody. I am what the most high. I, besides me, there's no nobody. And that's what he's speaking in those scriptures. And then we're going to show you even the thought pattern and what the son even said about the father. That he is the greatest, that he is the highest, that everything comes and stems from him. So let's keep reading. All right. So let's look at this. Now, he just said before that he's there's there's no other saviors besides him. But now we're going to see some in the Torah that seems like it's a contradiction. But the, we have agents of salvation. So watch this. Second Kings 13 and 5. And Yah gave Israel a what? A savior. So that they went out from under the head of the Syrians and the children of Israel dwelt there in their tents before time. So Yah gave Israel what a savior, but I thought he was the only savior. No, he's the point of reference, which from all salvation is coming from. Now he's sending an agent or an extension of himself as a savior to Israel. Isaiah 19 and 20. And it shall be for a sign and for a witness and unto Yah of hosts of the land of Egypt. For they shall cry unto Yah because of their oppressors. And he shall send them a what? Send them a savior, a great one. He shall deliver them. So he's, we see in here that he's already showing us his mind when it comes to that. That he's sending saviors, sending what agents of salvation to the nation of Israel. Nehemiah 9 and 27. Let's keep going. Therefore thou deliverest them into the hand of their enemies, who vexed them in the time of their trouble when they cried unto thee. Thou heardest from the heavens, according to thy manifold mercies, thou gavest them what? Saviors who what? Saved them out of the hand of their enemies. So he's the point of salvation and he's sending agents or, or agents of salvation, which are saviors, ambassadors of salvation to save who? The children of Israel from their enemies, according to the scripture. Obadiah, we seen this in the Torah. So we already clearing up the competition. I can really stop from here, but we're going to keep going. Obadiah 21 and 21. And Savior shall come up on Mount Zion to do what? To judge the Mount of Esau and the kingdom shall be who? Yahs. So we see in here that he sends agents of salvation to be saviors. To what? To usher in his salvation in the earth. But these people do not become saviors without the, without the originator of salvation. So they can't be a savior if the ultimate savior hasn't sent down. Let's keep going. We look at the same thing, deliverer. deliverer. You look in Strong's, it's Strong's H3467 and it says Yeshua. 
Yesha means to save 149 times, and also in 15 times it has in there as Savior, to be saved, to, or to be delivered, to be liberated, to be saved, to be delivered, to be saved in battle, to be victorious. So to be is, is um basically saying that you are causing something to be. You are causing liberation. You are causing a person to be saved. You are causing deliverance. You see that? You are causing a person to be victorious. So salvation, Yah being the only Savior, is the one that is causing salvation to come to the earth. Let's keep going. Judges 3 and 9. And when the children of Israel cried unto Yah, the Yah, Yah raised up what? A deliverer or a savior to the children of Israel who delivered them, even Odino, the son of Canaz, Caleb's younger brother. So we see in here at the same places where it has deliverer, it's the same place you can put savior. Judges 3 and 15. But when the children of Israel cried unto Yah, Yah raised them up a deliverer or a savior. Ehud, the son of Gamar, the Benjamite, a man left handed. By him, the children of Israel sent a present unto Eglon, the king of Moab. So we see in here. Now let's look at Yahusha. Let's see. Cause we, we just showed you all through the Torah. Line upon line, precept upon precept. Um, uh, you know, we showed you two or three witnesses. Let whatever work be established. Now let's see if Yahusha understood Let's see if Yahusha understood that he was the only savior or that he was an agent of salvation. But not just an agent, the ultimate agent, the agent that was destined to bring his father salvation from what? The foundation of the world. It says the lamb was already slain. So let's see his understanding. Let's see, is he saying that he's over his father and that he's the savior? Or if he understand that he only do what he is ordered to do because the point of salvation or the, uh, 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 yeah, the point of salvation is coming from where? Coming from the father, Yah. So let's see who Yahushua says that he understand that he's the ultimate agent of salvation that nobody else can do this work that he was about to do uh, to reconcile the nation of Israel back to the most high. Watch this. Matthew 4 and 4. But he answered and said unto them, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeded out the mouth of Yah. So he's stating here that man has to learn to live by the what? The words of Yah or the teachings of Yah or the instructions of Yah. The Torah. John 4, 34, Yahushua said unto them, my meat is to do the will of him that did what? Sent me and to finish the work. This is showing you that he's a sent agent of salvation. This is why it says, I believe in Isaiah 9, that a child was born, but what? A son was sent or given. John 5 and 17, but Yahushua answered them and said, my father worketh hitherto, I work. Therefore, the Yahudim sought to more to kill him because he not only broke the Sabbath, but he made it. He said he also said that God was his father, making himself equal with God. But watch how he answered that when they thought he was making himself equal. Then answered Yahushua and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the son can do what? Nothing of himself, but what he seeth the father do for whatsoever he doeth. These also the things that the son doeth likewise. So what does the son know? He's the ultimate agent of salvation when he has to have orders from his father. He said, I can do nothing of myself. That sounds like somebody that's sent. That sounds like an extension of the arm of the most high. Sending the son as his agent, his ultimate main agent to reconcile, reconcile the nation of Israel back unto him. We're saying that. Let's keep going. Let's look at the thoughts of Mashiach. John 5 and 28. John 5 and 28. John chapter 5 verse 28. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice and shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Watch this. 
I can of my own self do nothing. I can of my own self do nothing. This is why y'all, the father of us says that there's no other Elohim besides him. This is why he says that he is the only savior. Because the son understands this and understand that I have to fulfill the role of being sent. I can't do my own will. Of myself, I can do nothing. I can only be do what the well, as an ambassador of what my father tells me to do. Because I'm an ambassador, ultimate ambassador of salvation. Verse 30, I can of myself do nothing. As I hear, I judge. My judgment is just. Before I seek, because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which has what? Sent me. We're saying it. We're saying the same thing that the other scriptures were saying, that the Most High raised up a deliverer, that he raised up a Savior. John 6 and 38, for I came down from heaven. Not to do my own will. Sorry, y'all. Not to do my own will, but the will of the Father that did what sent me. John 6 and 38. For I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that did what sent me. John 5 and 45. Do not think that I was that I will accuse you to the Father. There's one that accuses you, even the Moses, in whom you trust. For had ye believed Moses, you would have what? Believe me. For the, they wrote of me, but if you believe not the writings, how shall you believe also my words? Because Moses, Moshe knew that he was what? An agent of salvation. And, and, and Yahushua said, if you believe him, then you would have believed me because what he spoke of me. Let's see what he spoke. Let's see what he spoke. Deuteronomy 18 and 15. Yah, thy Elohim, would do what? Raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee. So somebody's been raised up to be what? A prophet and a savior of thy brethren, like unto me. Unto him shall ye hearken, according to all that thou desires of Yah, thy Elohim, and Herod, in the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear it again, the voice of Yah, your Elohim. Did let me see it, this great fire anymore? lest I die not. And Yah said unto me, they have well spoken that which I have spoken. I will raise up a prophet from among thy brethren, like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. All that what? I shall command him. Who? Yah, because what? He's the point of what, which everything get its orders from. He going to speak what I would command him, letting you know that he's under me. He's under my governance. He's my son. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak what in my name, I will require it of him. Because what he's my ambassador. He's my son. He's the only begotten of me. He's letting you see he's the ultimate agent of salvation anointed to do a role that nobody else in the nation of Israel could touch or do. This is why he's the everlasting king and our king. Let's keep on reading. All right. So we sing what Yahushua thought and how he understood his role because he understood it. We just read it, right? Acts 5 and 31. Now let's look at what was prophesied about him or what was spoken of about him. Acts 5 and 31. Him have Yah exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. So he is to be a prince and a savior. He's also a high priest, and this is how he can deal with repentance and forgiveness of sin. If you don't believe that we that um, a high priest can bear the iniquity of Israel, then you really need to study the high priest. You need to understand and study what forgiveness is and what repentance is and what the high priest had to do to bring those things. Acts 13 and, and verse 22. Acts chapter 13, verse 22. And when he had removed him, he had raised up unto David to be their king, 
to whom also he gave their testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. Of this man's seed have Yah, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a what? A savior raised up to Israel, the ultimate agent of salvation. Yahusha, this is what it says, it raised uh, uh, unto Israel a savior. Matthew chapter 1 verse 20, but while he thought of these things, behold, an angel of Yah appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Ruach HaKadosh, a Holy Spirit, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yahusha, for he shall, what, save his people from what, their sins. He shall be a savior unto them. You see what we saying? I hope this is clear. Let's keep moving though. We're going to make it even more clear. We're going to clear this thing all the way up. Acts 13 and 17. Acts chapter 13 verse 17. The Elohim of this people of Israel chose our fathers and exalted people when they dwelt as strangers in the land of Mizraim. And with an high arm brought he them out of it. And about the time of 40 years suffered he their manners in the wilderness. And when he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, he divided their land to them by lot. And after he gave them unto them judges about a space of 450 years until Samuel the prophet. And afterwards they desired a king and Elohim gave them Saul, the son of Cease, a man of the tribe of Benjamin. By the space of 40 years. And when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. Of this man's seed have Elohim, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a what? A savior, Yahusha. He raised up, raised up, raised up. He sent, he delivered. Who's doing this? Who's doing the sinning? Yah is. He's the only Savior and there's none besides him. Nobody compares to him. But he is the one that orchestrates the order of salvation and who's going to be the ambassador of salvation and who's going to be the ultimate agent of his salvation. Who's going to be his extension, his right hand to go and fulfill his will. Oh, we're going to keep moving. We're going to keep moving. We got more and more. We got more and more scriptures. Who is the agents of your salvation? Let's read Luke 2, verse 10. Luke 2, verse 10. I know those words kind of small, but you can hear me. Luke 2, verse 10. <laughs> and the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I will bring good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all the people. For unto you is born this day the city of David, a what? A savior which is Messiah, the master. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout and waiting for the consolation of Israel. The Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Ruach HaKodesh that he should not see death before he had seen the Messiah. And he came by the Ruach into the temple. And when the parents brought the child Yahushua to do for him after the custom of the law, then he took him up in his arms and blessed him and blessed Elo, Yah and said, Yah, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace. According to thy word, watch this, verse 30, for my eyes have seen thy salvation. Now, who is he looking at? Who is he holding up? He's holding up Yahusha. He's holding up Mashiach. It said, my eyes have seen, I have put, I have behold the agent of your salvation. This is your salvation. That is what he's saying. Which thou hast prepared before the face of all the people as a light unto the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. This showing you. I hope this is clear, man. Let's go, little father. John three sixteen. 
Let's look at John 3.16. Like I said, this ain't going to take no long, long time. We almost done. John 3 and 16. For Yah so loved the world that he gave his agent of salvation. <laughs> For Yah so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whomsoever believing in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. So let's go to the Strong's. Uh, Strong's number G, 3439. Monogenous. Monogenous. Let's see what that means. Single of its kind only so monogenous begotten is that he gave the only one of its kind the only one of its kind what does that mean that means that nobody else could do this he's begotten of the most high He's the begotten son of the Most High. What does that mean? Nobody else. He's the only one of his kind that can do the specific orders that was carried out. He's been what? Anointed to do it. He's been set aside for this specific task. And he's the only one of his kind in Israel that can do this. Nobody else. No deliverer before. No savior before could do what he was destined to do. Now, when you look through the scriptures, you will see a pattern of two sons, one being son of the promise and one of the others being the son of the flesh. You will see that consistently all the way through. And we're going to show you this. You will see that with Cain and Abel. Cain was the son of the flesh. Abel was the son of promise or son of the spirit. And when Abel died, what? Seth came to continue on that son of the promise. You got Ishmael versus Isaac. Now watch what Hebrews, I think that's Hebrews 10 and 17. I want to say, I might have, yeah, I don't know why I didn't write that in there. But I want to say that's either, that's either Hebrews 11 and 17 or Hebrews 10. I'll tell you what, let me look at it. I believe it's Hebrews 10 and 17. I apologize that I didn't have that in there. Hebrews 10, I just got this together last night. Hebrews Let's try 11 and 17 first. I want to make sure I give y'all the right one. Yeah, it's 11 and 17. It says, uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 17. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. Wait a minute now. You mean to tell me that Isaac was his only begotten son and he had more sons? His other son he had was Ishmael and he had sons after Isaac, Keturah uh, sons, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. So in Isaac is the promise. This is why it calls him begotten. Monog Monogonies, if I'm saying that right, monogonies, which means he's the only one of his kind which what? could fulfill that work or fulfill that promise. Of whom said Isaac shall thy seed be called, I counted that Yah was able to raise him up even from the dead from whence he received him in a figure. All right. Now, we seeing that there, and I could have kept going because you have um, David and his sons. You had David and you had Nathan and Ab 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 Absalom and different ones like that that uh, was David's uh, son. Or was David brother, but then you got, you know, Isaac and, uh, but you, the, the promise of who the kingship, the line of the kingship would go through would be, um, Solomon. Would be Solomon and not Absalom and not the rest of them. All right. Let's look at this. Yahusha, the begotten of Yah to redeem Israel. So Yahusha was begotten monogamies, where he's the only one that could redeem Israel. But then Israel was the most high son too, and he was to redeem the nations. Both are sons. All right, let's look at it. Exodus 4 and 22. I tell Pharaoh that this is what Yah says. Israel is my what? Firstborn son. So what is that saying? The most high got more than one son in this earth. He's the firstborn son. But John 3, 16 says, For Yah so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The only begotten son. See? 
So it's the uh, Israel was the firstborn, but Mashiach is the only begotten son, the one that was set aside for this specific work to redeem back Israel's, um, so Israel can redeem back the nations. Hosea 11 and 1, when Israel was a child, I loved him, and he came out of Egypt, I called my son. Matthew 2 and 15, wherefore ye have said unto the death of Herod, the fulfillment of what uh, Yah has spoken through the prophet, out of Egypt I called my son. So we see in there that this is a type and a figure of Hosea 11, like an allusion towards that what happened here, and allusion was, uh, becomes a fulfillment, an understanding according to his uh portion here of being begotten you see what i'm saying but it's an in and it's a type and almost like a figure of hosea showing that what the first son couldn't do the second son which is the begotten one fulfill in order to restore the uh first uh, son uh in the earth back to its original purpose of redeeming the nations now you know we understand that the son that um, Yahusha was the son that was before, even before he came on earth, he existed with Yah. And we'll do a teaching on that pretty soon to show you that um, he was there. It's all through the Torah that talks about a son. All right, let's keep going. John 5 and 43. Now, we see in that, I hope we got clear understanding on that, on how we broke that down to begotten the agent of salvation we pushing that narrative john 5 and 33 now we're going to deal with name i am come who is i am yahushua i am come in my father's name you receive me not if another shall come in his own name him you will receive so he's saying i come in my father's name or my father's authority but you receive me not but if another come in his own authority you will receive him and it will show you what that how that authority relates to that. But let's look at the name of Yah to see that he comes in his father's name. All right. Psalm 68. Sing unto Yah. Sing praises to his name. Extol him that ride up upon the heavens by his name. What? Yah. And rejoice before him. Now, I know you in the English versions, you might see the J Jada when you look the word up in the um, lexicon or your concordance. And you'll see that it denotes back to Yah. So now let's see real quick in a Hebrew mind what name means because it's not necessarily dealing with letters in a Hebrew mind, but let's see what it represents according to some of the scriptures. Name represents authority, character, and reputation. Again, name represents authority, character, and reputation. I couldn't put all that information in here on that, but we will do we will do a teaching on the name so you can get familiar with that. But let's keep moving. Acts 4 and 12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no no other name under heaven given unto men why men must be saved. Now, in a Christian church, we will hop on that and say, Jesus, Jesus, there is no other name under heaven that men may be saved except the name of Jesus. Now, if that um, testimony there or if that epistle there is speaking of how you spell it, then it's for everybody before the English language came wouldn't have salvation in. Because you know English is one of the newest languages. So if all those people, Abraham, Isaac, even, even uh, Yahushua himself, none of them will be able to be saved because they can speak the name of Jesus. So we know it ain't talking about Jesus. Because you have people that doesn't, that can't pronounce, you don't have those type of letters in the alphabet to even come up with that sound. This is the whole reason that you transliterate words from the Hebrew um, when they was transliterating uh, Yahushua's name or Yeshua's name. They didn't have the alphabet letters or the sound, so they had to transliterate it with their words to produce a word similar to that so look up the rules of transliterization again look up the rules of transliterization versus translation so we know right here because you got all by over 70 languages and all of them can't even pronounce jesus what are you saying that they can't have no salvation some of them can't even pronounce yahushua they can't have salvation so it's not in the name but it's in the what about that now let's look at this and read it with and 
and, and replace name with authority and see if that works better. Neither there is, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other authority under heaven given among men whereby they must be saved, but the authority that he gave to Mashiach because he's the agent of salvation. Doesn't that make more sense? We're seeing that now. We can prove that even with more scriptures, but we don't have time. Exodus 20 and 7. We're going to show you that here names mean character. You shall not take the name of Yah in vain, for Yah will not leave anyone unpunished who takes his name in vain. You shall not bear the character of Yah in vain. For Yah will not leave you unpunished, him that takes his character or bears his character in vain. Because all of what Yah gave the nation of Israel was his mind, his laws, his instructions, his teachings. And all that makes of his what? It's a making of his character of who he is. He wants you to become his character, become him. So if I show you my mind, if I show you my instructions, if I show you and give you my character, don't take it on in vain. Don't take it on in vain. Now we'll look at the last one that means reputa re re reputation. Ezekiel 36 and 22. Therefore say unto the house of Israel, thus saith Yah, I do not do this for your sake. Or house of Israel, but for my what? My holy name's sake, or what? My reputation, which you have profaned among the heathen where you went. So you profane my reputation. You profane who I am. And I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which ye have profaned in the midst of them. And the heathen shall know that I am Yah, saith Yah our Elohim, who shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. So he said, I don't want you, you done went over there and you done messed my name up. You done messed my reputation up. So he said, I'm not going to do it for your sake, but I'm going to do it for my holy name's sake, for my reputation's sake, for who I am. So depending on the context in a Hebraic mind, this is what it speaks of when it comes talking about doing it in his name, the authority, the character, the reputation. Even when Mashiach said, in my name, you shall what? Cast out demonic spirits. You shall lay hands on the sick. He's saying, in my authority, you shall do that. Many shall come in my name, and I must do it and say, depart from me, I never knew you. You see what I'm saying? Ye that what? Work lawlessness, because what you don't have the character of me that I got from my father. Name represents authority, character, and reputation in Hebrew. But we call upon letters. All right, so I came on my father's name. That's one aspect of it. Let's keep moving. Psalm 68. Sing unto Yah, sing praises unto his name, and stole him that rideth upon the heavens by his name, Yah, and rejoice before him. So we see that Yeshua's or Yahusha, or some say Yeshaya, or some say Yahusha, Yahusha, that's the one I choose to use, means Yah's salvation. Yahu and Sha is salvation, or to save. So it's because, remember, Yahusha means to be saved, but Yahu. Shah means what? Yah's salvation. And this is why he said, I come in my father's name with my father's authority, my father's character, my father's reputation. But also even the letters of my name is my father's. Yahusha. Because what? I'm the ultimate agent of what? Yah's or my father's salvation. So this is why my father can say that there's no other savior besides me and be right. Because besides him or without him, there ain't no salvation. There is no other savior. But when he has ordained me to be specifically and be the only one of my kind, the only one can do this, I become the ultimate agent of what? Yah's salvation, and this is why he named me what? Yahusha, or Yahawasha, or Yeshaya, whatever dialect you want to use. But in the end, the, the meaning of the name means what? My father's salvation. I hope that made sense. Now, we ain't done. We just about done, though. 
Now I'm going to show you how Yahusha was the body of Yah in this earth, and we are the body of Mashiach. So the, the Most High has to have a body on earth. And this is why in Hebrews 10, this is my agent on the earth. I was in this body, what, reconciling the world back unto me. What, re reconciling the Israelites back unto me. And did then the nations Hebrews 10 and 5 therefore when Christ came into the world he said sacrifice and offerings you did not desire but a body you prepared for me and you look in Psalms 40 I think in 6 and the Septuagint it reads the same thing this is where Paul pulling this from therefore when Christ came into the world he said sacrifice and offerings you did not desire but what a body you prepare for me. Josh do great teachers are saying that Yahusha is the right arm, the right hand of the Most High. Colossians 1 and 15. It says the sun is the image in earth, not in heaven, but in earth of the vis invisible Elohim, the firstborn of all creation. So this is showing you the visibility in earth. His body is Mashiach. His extension of himself is Mashiach. Colossians 2 and 9. For in Christ is the fullness of the Godhead that dwells what? In bodily form. So the fullness of the Godhead in this realm as he's our ambassador is in Yahusha. Because he's the sent, ultimate sent agent of salvation. So when he leaves heaven and come to earth, the fullness of what? The heavenlies, the fullness of the most high dwells in him as his ambassador and bodily form. So he, Yahusha is the body of the most high, but we are what? The body of Mashiach. We are his body, and Yahusha is Yah's body. Let's keep proving this. John 17, and I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. I come to thee, Holy Father. Keep through thy own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one what as we are one. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through your truth. Thy word is true. As thou have sent me into the world to be your agent of salvation, now I have done my job. Even so, I have also sent them into the world. So now what? They are my body, my agents of salvation. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Verse 20, neither pray I for these alone, but for them which also shall believe on me through their word, which is what the descendants, the children, which is us, that they all may be what one as thou father art in me. I am in thee, that they also may be one in us. So this is showing you the body. This is showing you order. Y'all the head of Christ, Christ the head of man, man the head of the woman. Y'all, Yahusha is Yah's body and the uh, Call out assembly is Mashiach's body, the agents of salvation today. I hope this making sense. Verse 22, and the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them that they may be what one, even as we are one. I in them and thou in me that they may be made perfect in this oneness. So we made perfect by Yahusha in this realm being the body of Yah. And then Yahusha went back on the right hand of the Father. Now we are the body of Mashiach as being one with Yahusha as Yahusha is one with Yah. That the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved me and thou hast loved me. All right, so... I hope that makes sense. Now, you definitely can't be thinking in natural terms of physical vis uh, visibility when it comes to spiritual things. Because they are, they are different. They have different rules.
But I hope this makes sense by us being the body. This is why we're called the body of Christ or the body of Mashiach. We are, we are, watch this. We are the express image of, oh, I spelled that wrong. We are the express, express image of, of the Mashiach, or HaMashiach, Yeshua HaMashiach, Yahushua HaMashiach, being the fullness of his body, which he was the fullness of y'all's body in this earth realm. Now we are the fullest of his body. And this is why he said it's expedient that I leave, that the spirit can come and make your one body. And you're the fullness of me. Let's prove that. Ephesians 1 and 15. Wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in Yahusha and love unto all saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the Elohim of our uh, Yah, Elohim of our uh, master, Yahusha, the Father of glory, that the Father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened, that you may know what the hope of your calling is, what the riches of your glory and inheritance of the same, or the seed and greatness of your power to us for who believe according to the workings of your mighty power, which you wrought in Mashiach when you raised him from the dead and set him at his right, at your own right hand in heavenly places. So y'all raised him from the dead, set him at his own right hand in heavenly places, and he's far above all principalities, power Powers, might and demands every authority that is named not only in this world but also that which is to come watch this and he put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to who the called out ones the assembly watch what it says about their call out ones watch what it says about the assembly that's why he said upon this rock he asked peter who the men say that i am and, and, and peter said you are the son of the living elohim and he said upon this what rock i'm gonna build my what my called out ones my assembly so this is showing you let me read that again and have put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the called out ones, who are the called out ones, the ones that are in the blood of Mashiach, the one that is in him, which is his body. Who is his body? The assembly, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Just as Mashiach, when he is in earth, is the fullness of the Godhead bodily in form. We are the fullness of Mashiach bodily. You see what I'm saying? Let's keep proving that. First Corinthians 12 and 26. Now ye are the body of Christ, of Mashiach, and members in particular. Ephesians 4 and 12. For the prophet and other saints, and for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of uh, Mashiach. Rome, uh, Romans 12 and 5. So we, being many, are one body in Mashiach, and everyone one members of one another. First Corinthians 12 and 12. For as the body is one, have many members, and all the members that are one body, being many, are one body, so also is Mashiach. So, I'm going to read this, and it's going to conclude. We have been given the ministry of salvation, our original purpose. So, we messed up, we broke the covenant. Mashiach came to be that ultimate agent of salvation to bring us unto salvation to put us back in a rightful place to do our job as being the priest and reconciling the world back unto Mashiach first understanding that not being a shame of the gospel of the kingdom of the gospel of Mashiach because it's the power that leads unto salvation to what the Yahudim first then to the Gentile 2 Corinthians 5, 11 through 12. This going to wrap it up. Since then we know what is the fear of Yah. We try to persuade others and what we are in plain to Elohim. I hope it is also plain in your conscience. We are not trying to commend ourselves to you again, but we are giving you an opportunity to take pride in us so that you can answer those who take pride in what is seen rather than what is in the heart. If we are out of our mind, as some say, it is for us. Elohim, if we are in our right mind, it's for you. For Mashiach loves compels us because we are convinced that that one died for all and therefore all died. And he died for all that those who live shall no longer live for themselves, but him who died for them 
and was raised again, just like when Mashiach was him, he didn't live for himself. He lived for the Father. That's why we shouldn't speak our own words, speak our own thoughts, know that we can't do nothing because we are the body of Mashiach. So he worked off orders of, of the Most High, so we should work off orders, just as he did. Verse 16, so from now on, we regard no one from a world point of view. Though we were regarded in Mashiach in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if any is in Mashiach, he is a new creation has come. The old has gone and the new is here. All this is from Elohim who reconciled us to himself through Mashiach and gave us what? The ministry being the body of reconciliation. That the Elohim was reconciling the world unto himself in Christ, not counting people's sin against them. And, he, and, and, and it was committed unto us the message of what? Reconciliation. And we are therefore Christ's Mashiach ambassadors, as though Elohim were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Mashiach's behalf and be reconciled to the Most High. So this is showing you, family. Just as we spoke before, we are the by the um the body of Mashiach. We are his his uh agents of salvation that comes from the Father. You see what I'm saying? That comes from the Father. So I hope this teaching made sense and I hope it helped answer the brother question that had a question about this that wanted to understand this a little better. That needed some more understanding. So hopefully that this answered your question. And now we're going to be able to show you and have an answer for those that ask us of the hope that we have in us. Especially those that are asking us <coughs> about the hope that we have in Mashiach. Being able to understand him and being able to defend him. That's important. So, what do we understand? We understand that the Father speaks of there's no one, no Savior besides him. But he sent out agents of salvation. He sent out agents of salvation. And we hope we was able to couple that with you so you can get a full understanding. We're going to leave you with the song. Going to get that work, baby. We work, 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 work. Make this thing happen. All praises to our Elohim, our Father, Yah, host, the, 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 the King of Kings, the one that inhabits eternity. We bless him. We honor him. We worship him. And all glory and honor also go to the lamb. The king. All glory to the king. Shalom. 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 We're going to keep getting that work.
That's it, man. We need more work. We're going to get that work. We're going to keep bringing those scriptures. Defending the Bible. Defending our heritage. Defending our Elohim, Yah of hosts. Defending the Mashiach. That's it. We're going to keep working, baby. Shalom, shalom. Rebirth of a nation. Awaken, restore, prepare. Shalom.